within the prisons, there are those even younger who are at risk. Like Guillermina's children. My children were on their own. My husband and I were both prisoners. And I felt terrible because my children were abandoned. In one of our visits to the prison, this lady came up to us and asked us to visit her house since she and her husband were both detained. When my parents went to prison, we didn't know what to do because my cousins and my aunts and uncles wouldn't help us. We didn't have anything to eat. And we didn't know where we could live because my father was in the second section of the prison and my mother was in the fourth section. We just didn't know what to do. I had to be father and mother to my brother and sister. Carminia had to look after her brother and sister. She had to cook for them, she had to get them off to school and sometimes they had to go to school without anything to eat. After surviving on their own for months, Carminia and her younger sister and brother eventually moved into the prison to be with their mother. I lived with my mum when she was in the prison for four months and it was awful. My mum didn't sleep. She sat up all night knitting so that she'd have some money to buy food for us. They only gave us one plate of food for the whole family. I was really scared when my mum got 30 days in the punishment cell and I had to sleep on my own. The punishment cell is really, really cold. It's a horrible thing. I felt very shut in. They didn't let us out very often because they said it was dangerous. And I had to go to and from school from the prison. And in the evening, they only gave us one cup of tea for our supper for all of us. Guillermina's children are only three of the thousands who are currently living in Bolivia's jails. When you're in the prison, you have to be inside all night. They lock you in at 10 o'clock and you can't go out to the toilet. And you have to keep the light off as well. When you're at home, you can have the light on as long as you like. When they lock us in, it makes me feel trapped. It's horrible living in the prison. I don't like it. I hope my mom's going to leave soon because it's horrible having her in prison. It's very scary. I don't like this building. I'd like their future to be different. I'd like them to study. I don't want them to end up like me. And I'd really like them to get this place out of their heads. It's not the right place for them to be. This place is for people who've committed a crime. It's not for them. They are innocent. Here in San Pedro prison in Oruru, the women's section is inside the walls of the men's prison. Angelica runs a small shop out of her cell. Her three daughters live with her in the tiny living space, which is only one bed. I felt awful when my mum went to prison because my stepdad was already there and my dad wouldn't help us. We didn't have anyone to help us. It is difficult for them. They cry a lot when we first came here because they have to take turns to sleep on the floor. One night, one of them sleeps on the floor and the next night, the other one. I don't like living in the prison because the ladies say a lot of bad things and they fight a lot. It's just not good being here. It was horrible, really horrible, because there's really bad people in the prison. I didn't want to be there. I even thought of going to live in an orphanage rather than live here. For us, as girls, there's a lot of danger living in the middle of just men. I don't think any children should be in prison because they can suffer like I've suffered. It's horrible being there. I don't have words to describe it. The men are so badly brought up. In the prisons, we saw there were adolescent girls there whose mothers had been detained and they didn't have anywhere else to go. And they were there playing pool out in the yard with the men. We asked ourselves, how can we help these little ones? I didn't like living in the prison with my mom. 
I didn't like it because they were men, and they made me afraid. We saw that they were at great risk, and we saw the need to get them out of there, at least during the day. It brought my attention when I found out a child had died in a prison in La Paz. She had been going in to visit her father on a regular basis, and sometimes she stayed over. One of the other prisoners raped and abused her, and she was found a few days later dead in his cell. And she was 10. And that motivated me a lot. Get the children out of the prison now and take them to a safe place. So, with the help of Prison Fellowship International, we started up the Angel Tree Center. Angel Tree is a prison fellowship initiative running in many countries. A project where Christmas presents are bought for children whose parents are in jail. Prison Fellowship Bolivia has grown this into the Angel Tree Center. A year-round, full-day program where the children are given time to study and play, as well as financial aid with school books and other basic needs. The day center opened and we come here and get help with the subjects we can't do in school. They give us a snack in the morning and then they give us our lunch. My favorite thing about coming to the center is that they give me food. And it's lovely. It made me feel karma because I could see how well my children were doing when they came to the prison to visit me. As a volunteer, I work with the children in the center and I visit their mothers in prison. And we also follow them up in their schools. In the day center, I like to study, to play and to talk to my friends. I like going to the center because I learn things. I play with the other children in the center and we study together. It's a great time to forget our worries and problems and it's good that they teach us the word of God. It's the place where we can share with the children games, laughter, tears. The core motivation of the Angel Tree Center is to rescue the children through the love of Jesus. It is horrible living in the prison with my daughters, but thanks to prison fellowship, my daughters at least get to go out during the day. And on my 14th birthday last year, my mom was let out of prison, and that was the best present I've had in all my life. And my mom's still working and we're still getting help from the day centre. And that's what motivates me to keep going in this ministry. And I really think it is a ministry. Because being close to these children is being close to God. <laughs>